Hello my soccer universe, it has been quite a busy day and so I decided I'm gonna react to the and analyze the draw for the Champions League, the Europa League and the Europa Conference League all in one video and don't split it in two. And then tomorrow we'll have a little marathon uh, for you guys of review videos for the different leagues. I may stretch it out into Wednesday as well if it gets too many. Let's see how many get done because I have actually quite some work to do myself. So uh, let's see how it goes. Champions League draw. I mean, background, you can see it. Here are the Champions League teams. Here are the, Euro uh, the Conference League teams. Here put up Europa League teams and I... You see already it's all winners and losers, although there were only two Conference League teams that I have in my collection that weren't a draw. One is a winner, the other one is rather a loser. I'm always, always wearing Milan, because um, it's special to have Milan in a round of 16 draw for the Champions League and playing Spurs. No, don't, don't worry, we're going to walk through all the game, but my initial thought is, while it's not my favorite draw, I think and and I I think it's definitely among the f you know the better side the better teams that I would have chosen uh, there were much worse teams in there than Spurs and I think this it could be a very even one I still would give the edge to Spurs um, simply they are a Premier League team Milan always does is hard against Premier League teams but there are quite a few battles in there namely um, if all are fit. If all are fit, um, the, the old French national team goalkeeper against the new one, Loris against Mignon, that's a big one. Giroud, of course, is uh, playing as a former Arsenal and Chelsea player at Spurs. We have, of course, a little bit of an Italian connection there as well, not necessarily with Milan. So, yeah, and I still remember the last time that those two played in the round of 16 where it was just the worst possible matchup for Milan. I think this time around uh, it might actually work a whole lot better. And I still remember this was at the old Weyerbacher lane. That's a game I really think that Milan should have won and maybe forced overtime then. Or I think they, they, were, they could have eliminated Spurs on the away goal rule in any case. The draws, all the three draws are dominated by three big draws of course we have a replay of last season's champions league final we have another marquee matchup with bayern against psg which is the champions league final from uh the covid season in 2020 so another huge draw and exactly i think uh liverpool and psg those were the two big names in the uh second place teams they were hoping for easier draws and they didn't really get it. So uh, winning your group really, really pays off as Benfica, I can definitely tell. And then the third one is actually happening in the Europa League playoff. Again, Barcelona with a marquee matchup this time against Manchester United. This was the first one even drawn out of the pot. I didn't see it live, but I saw uh, the order it was drawn. I mean, talk about tasty. Talk about tasty. So... I would say let's start with the Champions League draw. Uh, here are the matches as they were drawn in order. The first one, City against Leipzig, uh, is almost an El Plastico, if you would like. Uh, City probably will easily win that one. Then, if Benfica and Bruges could have chosen each an opponent that they would love most, I think they would have chosen each other. They are match made, made in heaven. Both of them really, really, really happy. Of course, Benfica, the large uh, favorites. But given what Bruges could do to Porto, this will be a kind of a warning. But Benfica is, I would argue, a step above Porto. Real Madrid against Liverpool, the revenge of the revenge of the revenge. And Liverpool still, uh, it has been a long time that they've beaten Real Madrid. Is it this time around? We gotta see. Real Madrid kind of tending so and so at this moment, but you know, there's so much time between the draw now, it's November, and these are played in February. So many things can change. Uh, it's definitely one of the tastiest ones that in there. And of course, two of the most storied teams ever in this com com competition. I said already something about Spurs against Milan. Um, again, I think this could be a rather open one overall, although I think see an advantage Spurs, I repeat myself. Napoli against Frankfurt, I think Napoli really wanted to have Frankfurt. I'm not sure if Frankfurt wanted to have Napoli. 
that is one that I think is a sleeper because I think Frankfurt can do some, something. Of course, Napoli at the moment is flying high, but again, we have a World Cup in, in between. We don't know what's have happening. Uh, another interesting one is, of course, Chelsea against Dortmund. These are now established Champions League teams, both with their troubles. Again, one would favor Chelsea, but maybe Dortmund can spring an upset. Inter will not be upset that they got Porto, although I have a feeling that Porto can do something against Inter. Just uh, there is some, something about them. Then Bayern against PSG, as we will see, the um, odds and whatever have this as a rather even matchup. I think it will largely um, fall on how the three up front, if they're still in form and, and, and so on, can they actually challenge Bayern and how defensively sound can PSG be? Bayern the favorites, I would say, uh, but it's definitely a big clash. The last time those two met, those were crazy games. Uh, they were always the uh, away team won. However, the home team completely outplayed them. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to, to, to that one. That's already a modern classic. Now, uh, before we look at uh, the chances, I want to actually see uh, uh, give you winners and losers. We want to do this for the Champions League, uh, where you can see which teams have improved the chances the most. And I'm looking at it global, globally, so the average, this is kind of the outside part. Uh, of course, in moving to the quarterfinals, the biggest improvement was, of course, Club Bruges, because they got the nominally easiest opponent. But Benfica is not far behind. Overall, Benfica's chances improved a whole lot, as does Inter, Club Bruges, Frankfurt, even Napoli. So you see those those pairings are kind of a little bit um, on the positive side. You can definitely see that the, uh, <laughs> the headline clashes, all those teams lost. I mean, you see Real Madrid, down you see Bayern, down you see PSG, down you see Liverpool have uh, overall uh, worsened. Very Spurs kind of stayed steady. Milan also didn't improve much. Porto didn't improve much. So uh, I think it's interesting to see this graph overall. However, overall chances, there has been a little bit more movement. Uh, surprisingly, Bayern against PSG is so even, and Liverpool are favorites according to the ratings that I com compute over Real Madrid, although I'm not quite so convinced about it. But Liverpool is rated quite highly. So Liverpool is actually now in second place in terms of favorites. Chelsea and Spurs also moved up, as did Milan. You see Real Madrid took a big hit. But that's exactly what Real Madrid need to uh, get fired up again. And yeah, you see, uh, it's still cities to lose, but it's interesting. Liverpool, Bayern and PSG are kind of close-ish uh, together as well. And for the Champions League, I can already give you the um, uh, mat mat matches when, when they will take place. Uh, the first one is Milan against uh, Spurs and Bayern against PSG at the same time, which is a little bit of a shame, I gotta say, because I think you could have switched around with the ones on Wednesday there. Um, I think both of these are better than the ones on Wednesday. My personal opinion, of of course. And then we get the Liverpool or Real Madrid a little bit later. I think the last set is one of the more boring ones. But and then the return legs, we flip it just around. So um, you can mark your calendars. It will be interesting. And whatever prediction I give now, it may completely change by the time we get to these fixtures, as it usually is very, very often. You see, ah, they are big favorites. And then it gets closer and closer and closer. And you don't know what's happening at that time. Going over to the to the Europa League, I think we also have here quite some interesting uh, pairings. Of course, United Barcelona is the marquee fixture here. That's the one that everyone will be talk, talking about. Both teams will not be happy uh, with that at all. Um, I will definitely favor Barcelona in this one, but it is you don't know which Barca will turn up. You also don't know which United will turn up, which makes this a very, very interesting fixture. Uh, the older ones of us will remember Nantes against Juve in the 96 Champions League semi-final. That is actually, I remember still those Nantes churches, they completely surprised me. And of course, I remember Juve uh, beating Nantes, but those were uh, close ties. This one should be more uh, geared towards Juve. 
mit Julian Sporting and start Rennes against Schachter will not interest uh, many outside of these respective countries. I gotta say, Union Berlin against Ajax is a really, really interesting moment. They are the Dutch giants and then there is the surprise team of the Bundesliga, although getting beaten heavily uh, yesterday, playing in one of the most unique stadiums. I think this is an interesting one. Mono against Leverkusen, there are also quite a few ties, although, um, you know, Lever Leverkusen meanwhile uh, can fill their stadium. Monaco still can, 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 can do it, so it's kind of a, bit, a little bit of a weird duel. I definitely like the last two PSV against Sevilla. I think this has huge potential. And at PSV, there's the, uh, Luc de Jong playing, who actually won the Europa League for Sevilla. And we know Sevilla and the Europa League is always a special thing. And Roma against Salzburg. I actually think it is much more even than one would think especially if Salzburg get rolling. Uh, we saw, you know, yes, they were uh, trounced by Milan, but Milan is a better team than Roma this time around. So, gotta see. Um, they, the matches will, will play on Thursday after the first set of the uh, Champions League uh, fee fixtures, but we see now the chances of favorites. We see that Barcelona still remain in second are almost a 60% favorite over Manchester United, which sounds as bright, but you were moved up because they got a relatively easy draw. One has to admit they could also have played against United. And you see a few uh, teams jumping up and down, um, which is interesting, but I think the, the rise of you is one really, really interesting. Of course, Ajax and Fenerbahce also a little bit boosted Fenerbahce already in the next round for sure. Uh, those that are in the next round get also a little bit of a boost sometimes because, you know, uh, one of Barcelona and Manchester United will go out. Manchester United, of course, being slashed because against almost anyone else, they would have been favorites. Now they play against Barcelona, which was by far the toughest draw for them. They're outsiders, so uh, not easy. And let's end it in the conference league. Um, the teams there are a clear step below what we saw. In the Europa League, you can argue, in, well, it's not uh, all Champions League, but there are a few ties in there that one could actually imagine in the Champions League, like Barca and Manchester United. Um, for me, the tie that sticks out is Fiorentina against Braga, but when you look at Gent against uh, Karabakh, um, yeah, int couldn't tell you who's the favorite re really there, as is for Basel against Trabzonspor, although it's always interesting to see a Swiss-Turkish duel because there's so many uh, Turkish people living also in Switzerland. Uh, Lazio, I think, got a tricky tie, and I think they had this last season as well against Cluj, but I think they should be the favorites. I mean, Lazio is a much improved team. Bosnia against Bordeaux Glimt. I actually would give it to Glimt here. And then I think the standard ties really Fiorentina against Braga. Those are two teams that were both having hopes of uh, going there. Playing against each other is probably not the tie that either one of them wanted to have. I think uh, Fiorentina made it into the Conference League via Gilles Vicente, a Portuguese team, but Braga is a step above that. So uh, I actually would favor Braga in that one. The Dnipro Larnaca, yeah, this everyone was going to come watch him as his partisan sheriff and then Anderlecht against Lud Ludogorets. As I said, not the big ties that everyone will um, look forward to. However, we're still going to watch and we're still going to see probably some exciting stuff. As for the favorites, it's still West Ham and uh, Villarreal, but Lazio got boosted Arno up there. Nice is in there. Um, Fiorentina stay for now level. They are, according to my model, favorites, but I actually don't trust Fiorentina as much. I think that Braga can give them quite some trouble. So yeah, that's my reaction from all the four, uh, the four, the three draws. Um, which matches do you like? Are you happy with the draw that your team got? Um, and what do you do to say to the competitions that I gave you there? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see more videos like these. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.